Takijama, Episode 6, Chew Fat. Chew Fat clung to the rocks, gobsmacked by the spectacle of disaster which had just unfolded before his eyes. Even now, with the tempests passing, a slate grey ocean angrily raised up gigantic heaving swells and sent them crashing down as if to affirm the absolute power of nature. Where was the fleet? There was then, there is now, and of the future, well, for Chu Fat, this future is the subject of this story. Only half an hour before, he'd been rowing furiously, a light dinghy hastily packed with his kit. A promotion, a transfer, a new position on the grand flagship awaited. The captain's personal chef, the big time, fame and acclaim, all he'd ever dreamed of. But dreams are funny things, aren't they? Shifting, changing beyond logic, with a life and agenda all of their own, even though they are the dreamer's creations. So, who'd have thought? A Pacific Island stopover, a fleet weighing anchor, a fresh southerly change, and a chef in a little dinghy between jobs. As fate would have it, making it as the captain's personal chef? Not today. Not for Master Chew Fat, anyway. Although, if one looked at the life of this bedraggled, half-drowned figure, clinging to the rocks for the last of his strength, one may imagine what might have been. As an apprentice under Master Kwong, he'd worked his way up in kitchens in the Sichuan province, specialising in the popular and traditional local dishes. Upon finishing training, encouraged by Master Kwong and wishing to expand his horizons, Chu Fat applied for a position as one of the many cooks needed for the Emperor's newly commissioned Grand Fleet. And its mission, to boldly go and map the unknown world. For seven years the fleet had been at sea, exploring west to Africa via India, the islands and archipelagos between, then south to an ancient land where strange animals hopped and gold glittered on the ground. And now on this voyage home, the fleet had made a brief stopover at this Pacific island. The tempest had done its work well, for indeed the fleet was gone. Scrambling over the rocks as another steely wave crashed down, Chu Fat fell, not to drown the foamy death he anticipated, but onto a sheltered sandy beach. He crawled up that beach, up to safety, and there, overwhelmed by exhaustion, he fell into a deep sleep. A sunny morning glistened on the waves as they gently washed ashore. He awoke stiff and sore, covered in kelp. The lack of debris meant that probably the fleet had escaped, but where the storm had carried it and whether it would return was beyond his knowledge. There was, however, washed up to the high water mark, together with the shattered remains of his dinghy, some of his kit. A wooden box with the tools of his trade. Kitchen gear. Time passed, and a marooned chew fat, faced with no other option, made the island his home. He found the island to be a paradise. In truth, he sometimes wondered if he was really alive. Maybe I'm a ghost. Maybe I drowned back there on that beach. He discovered fruit and vegetables in abundance, spices he'd never encountered before, crystal clear water pure beyond belief. Chu Fat set himself up in the ruins of the only structure he could discover on this uninhabited island, an ancient garden temple. Standing in the centre of what once had been a circle of solid stone pillars, which now lay in disarray on the ground, a courtyard, a fountain, a vegetable patch, in short, all he could have ever asked for. Once cleaned out of the undergrowth, the stone temple walls revealed faded frescoes and mosaics depicting streams and fish, 
cranes and cats. But it was the barely visible drawings of the people that caught his attention. He recognised them immediately. They were identical to cave paintings he'd seen during his long voyage. Small, shining halo people. His kitchen kit was in good shape after the storm. A strong wooden backpack, which, when folded out, converted to a workbench. The wok, steamer, knives and containers of herbs fitted neatly, and that old charm box had a compartment all of its own. Funny to think this is what survived. This was exactly the kit he carried when the Grand Fleet visited East Africa. As a cook on one of the safari expeditions, Chufat was once called upon by his commander to make congee for a sick child, the son of a tribal chief. Chufat obliged and made the perfect dish laced with herbal remedies. In gratitude, the chief presented him with a gift, a tiny wooden puzzle box containing a pair of old tarnished earrings fashioned as cats. Nothing flash, quite ordinary really. They looked like children's trinkets, the ones you might win at the lucky dip at a flea market. Toy costume jewellery. Better give all of this a clean out. He unpacked everything and laid it on some palm fronds. Opening the tiny wooden puzzle box, he took out the earrings. Hmm. Temple store souvenirs. Funny. I carried them around all this time since Africa. Hmm. Well, five years, I think. <laughs> I'd almost forgotten about that. They were so anciently grubby that Chu Fat decided to clean them with a relish. A paste made with the purple berries from a weedy looking bush growing by itself in the garden. He saw the bush softly glowing in the full moonlight one tropical evening. Maybe the glow might rub off. Bongo berry relish. I guess you could say we've arrived at one of those this is it moments. Because, well, for Chu Fat, from Sichuan, master chef and explorer in the Emperor's Grand Fleet, his life was about to change. The paste worked wonders, literally, and what emerged from the ancient grime was indeed a pair of girls' earrings, twin silver metal cats with pale blue eyes shining. Instinctively, Chu Fat put them on, and to his surprise, with no clasp, they gently slid behind his ears and stayed there. Tingling sensations ran up and down his spine. He was in shock, but like a moth to a flame, he could not resist. They are so beautiful, gasped you fat. All this time, I thought they were cheap, bizarre trinkets. Then the voices began. Traveller, please accept our gift. Open your heart and mind. Let the energy flow. Whoa! W what is this? Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to startle you. Please relax and hear us out. Hmm? We are your earrings, of course. You see, 3,000 years ago, in the land of Egypt, we were found by a girl who one night saw a fiery chariot fall from the sky and scorched the earth. What she found was debris, chips of metal broken from her mothership. You see, we come not from this world or time. The ship was repaired and departed, but we were left behind. Like you on this island, lost and maybe a ghost? Wah! That's it! I've gone mad! He jumped up and down. He tried to take the earrings off. But they had other ideas. The girl who found us became a great queen of Egypt. A pharaoh. She kept us a secret all her life. Then before she passed over, she placed us in a wooden puzzle box, offered us to the river, and cast us into the Nile. Since then, we have been dormant, hibernating, waiting for the one who can help us find our mother again. You are the first person since our queen we've communicated with. Thankfully, we passed through this world as children's trinkets. We were not gold or silver, little value, 
Our queen was wise. Then you cleaned us with the bongo berry radish, mustachu fat. You like it? We love it. The relish, the berries, the sweetest healing balm. Your gift has healed yet again. Chu Fat, Master Chef. We humbly say thank you. He took a deep breath. The incredible sensations and effects of wearing the earrings, now glowing like full harvest moons, ran wild through his body. A roller coaster of faces, places, sounds, images, smells, and stories. What happened after you were thrown into the river? on its axis since last this gate was used. You can realign them. But those old stone columns, they must weigh tons. Yes, they do. But trust us, touch the stone with your hand. A simple mantra to begin. Think mind over matter. Focus, cause if you lose concentration, you're toast. Uh, the rock floats light as a feather. See what we can do together? Place the stone here. Excellent. Now the rest. The stone circle awakened. Holding the berries, Chu Fat stood in its center. The earrings shone brilliantly, pulsating with the energy restored after 3,000 years of hibernation. Too fat, earrings and berries harmonized. The notes cascaded up. Then, from nowhere, the mothership appeared, hovering above the stone circle. You can imagine the reunion. Your long lost, much loved pet just walked back in through the front door. This brings us to the end of our stories for Mr. Takijama. Our hope is that we as humans find this energy. It lives within all of us. And as a footnote, I can tell you, well, that naturally, the little aliens invited Chu Fat to come with them. He accepted. And now his intergalactic cooking show is a big hit. Before he left, though, Chu Fat took the scroll in which he'd been keeping a record of his recipes and remedies, including the bongo berry relish. He buried it in the yam patch. <laughs> <laughs> 